Hi, Shahid. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for coming. Uh, it's lovely to meet you finally. Well, thank you I've for having me on your show. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I don't know where to start, to be honest, because there's a lot of things. Uh, but you said, okay, let me just say it. You said, I'm really, really sad. شوف حتى انا ما ذكرت انت ذاكره ريلي اللي صار مو زين وشفت في اللي صار مو زين yeah. انت بس شفتيني يا yeah. زين شلون شلون قررتي هالاشياء This is something called postural analysis okay. and something we use in Pilates to know exactly which program we should give to the client mm. So your postural analysis طبعا is something that we take as a glimpse when I see you standing يبان معانا مثلا your shoulder if it's rounded if you're kneeling on one side اكثر um, if your your head is forward وهذه الأشياء طبعاً are very common due to posters حق الشغل يعني due to your job, office job or مثلاً your cameraman يبان معانا exactly which posture that's going to be affected or which muscles هتكون affected in this uh, situation Okay, فإذا هاي البوستر مالي أنا خنقول ما أدري شنو المشكلة اللي فيني بس خنقول أنا ما هي صوب مو صوب ثاني yeah. هذا يتصلح ولا أنا صار لي حين تسنين You have scoliosis? ما أدري one side higher than the other Probably, yeah, yeah. هذا يتصلح ولا ما يتصلح؟ طبعاً طبعا زين يتصلح يعني انا لازم اروح مثلا اخذ علاج ولا تمرين ولا يتصلح ان انا بس اعدل الهابتس مالوتي؟ شوف اتس ا جروب اوف ايفري ثينج توجذر اوكي يعني يوجولي لما يكون سكليوسيس ليتس سي فور اكزامبل بيكوز هو هذا الان بالانس ان سايدز ان جنرال اول شيء تبدا فيه التمرين بيكوز ذا ماسلز هي اللي تمسك السباين ان ون بليس وما تخلي موفز بيكوز يو نو في ماسلز ابوزينج ايتش اذر يمين ويسار اوكي سو يور سباين في النص وي هاف تو سترينثن ذيز ماسلز عشان انت يو دونت كيب hiring your curve with Zed and deck that imbalance. Mm. But then Finas in a later stage of scoliosis, which I had, by the way, and I was diagnosed scoliosis when I was 14 years old. Okay. And back then I was told in Nazim, I do an operation and I have to do rehab على طول. And I didn't want to do that because I was very young. Mm. And I got into sports. And from sports, I managed to actually minimize the symptoms mm. and live with scoliosis uh, basically pain-free. اوكي اوكي زين وهذا نفس اللي مثلا في ناس لما ريله لما ينسدح عنده ريل اطول من الثاني yeah, هذا هو نفسه yeah. بس بعدين انا شفت مره الفيديو انه ايش سوى سحب ريله طقت كان يصيرون اثنينهم متساويين اتس لايك ويذن ون مينت ذيس از سمثينج ايلس هاو از ذات هابينج هذا ممكن يكون ا تايت هيب اوكي اوكي بيكوز اف يو هاف ا تايت هيب يور ماسلز ار جوينج تو بي فيري ستيف اراوند ذا جوينت بس ذات ماست بي فيري ستيف لان الديفرنس بتوين ذيم كان تقريبا هالكثر yeah. وبعدين راح فشنو معنى مدى الستيفنس اللي ماسكه هالكثر مسافه؟ شوف يعتمد ويتش تايب اوف ستيفنس. Now there is something called muscle stiffness. Mm. وعندك your fascia which mm. is the hand it's the trend and everybody's talking about it. Your fascia can actually show a posture that is completely different than reality. Okay. لانه it's something um, now عبر السنين لما كانوا يرشحوا بني ادمين and they didn't know that there was this very light uh, Let's say they called it a tissue back then mm. that was around the body of Bani Adam, all covers the whole area. And they notice, let's say, واحد لو توفوا عند السكر, mm. they notice you know, the fascia is very thick when it comes to the pancreas. Okay. And then, مثلا واحد ثاني عند المرارة, the fascia is very thick mm. around the gallbladder. But what they realized, you know, fascia moves and fascia can become stiff, yeah. and can become lubricated, and started rolling. And nastahin they use the foam roller, the fascinator. to roll the fascia. And okay. once you roll it, it will release the joint and release the muscle and have the stiffness that you're talking about. Mm. But stiffness, you should be categorized with its muscle or is it your fascia? Mm. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. But it's not to be the same thing. Okay, and then, okay, okay, that's, I guess, I just jumped really deep into it. <laughs> uh, okay, let's, let's, let's go back. So, can you tell me your certifications? Because you have a lot. Okay. Just like uh, the ones that come on top of your head. Okay, so I'm a Pilates instructor, okay. level one and two, intermediate and advanced. Mm. I'm a neuro Pilates specialist for okay. neurological conditions from ADHD, ADD, autism to MS, Parkinson's, and stroke recovery. I'm a fascinator uh, mm. and special and movement specialist. Okay, okay. So when you say ADHD, like how how can Pilates solve something related to ADHD? Okay. So studies have shown in you know, a that have neurological conditions, they have actually weak muscles. For example... Weak te- muscles where? In general. Uh, their body, yeah. Oh. It comes with the neurological condition. Yani somebody with attention deficit disorder okay. is not going to have that very clear pathway between the brain and their muscle. But let's say if you ask that client to lift both their arms high, one arm is going to be reaching higher than the other. Mm. And in their pro- proprioceptive, they think you know, it's the same. 
فسبحان الله هذه النيورولوجيكال روتس ليتس سي فروم ذا برين تو ذا ماسل ويز اور تكنيك وي كرييت نيو وايز اند نيو باث وايز تو يوز ذيم تو ريتش هذا السترينث اور ذات بوزيشن ذات كلاينت شود بي ذير يعني اي جيف يو ان اكزامبل اوكي بيكوز اي هاف سكليوسس اند اي هاف ون سايد هاير ذان ذا اذر سو ماي نيرفز ار نوت بالانسد اون بوث سايدز سو اف اي بلاي تنس I can actually kick the ball from my right, but when I do it from my left, it's actually very hard because my eyes don't have that range of motion to go all the way for me to see oh. the ball exactly. So I need to actually fix my posture or rotate to my left more to see it correctly. Oh. These small differences make a big result, and oh. especially for me. Okay, so, so how much, let's say I have ADHD. And if I do Pilates and I start to develop myself, how much can you get back to me as far as like, you know, ADHD, how much can I improve? A lot. You can improve a lot. Actually, you can, more necessarily you do Pilates. Mm. You do it, the neuro technique, which we use in our Pilates method. It's okay, what's the neuro technique? Uh, the neuro technique is basically enhancing the brain and muscle together. So I'll give you an example. The connection, Yanni? Yeah. I'll okay. give you an example. There's something called a blaze pod. I don't know if you saw it on Instagram. These are small balls and they light up. Oh, it's a red light. Another time it's a blue light. So we can actually include squat and tap the red lights. So this is a brain muscle connection because you're waiting for that red light. Mm-hmm. Oh, your hand is going there and reaching. But this feedback, the sensory feedback is what we work on. Okay, 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 okay. okay. So then if you... As an Iranian insan, adi ma fini ADHD wala shay. Yeah. So I guess if I want to be more reactive, I should do these kind of exercises. Come on. So I'm guessing like race drivers and whatnot, they do this kind of stuff because they move so fast and they have to decide really fast. Exactly, and they have to respond very fast. Okay, okay, okay. So okay, your okay. feedback, how that with the neurological condition, sometimes it becomes slower. Mm. You know, let's say for example, MS. Mm. MS after a certain while, you lose that flexion in one foot or in one hip in general. Okay. You know, okay. so for them to actually walk, the brain Abal Yursil had a signal to that side, the MS affected side. Mm. It takes time, so that's why you see them drag the leg and they can't actually flex the knee. Mm. So when we exercise, I don't actually tell her flex your knee because if she thinks about it, it's going to take a while. But we, I actually cue something else for her to bend her knees without feeling. But this is a new pathway for mm. her to bend her knees instead of me actually saying it and that. original route that doesn't work. Mm. Okay, so these pathways, do they get... When do these pathways, as I get older, do they go away from me or do they go away from me? Or do they go away from me? Look, there's nothing in the body of Bani Adam that can't be fixed. Of course, other than that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write. But if you put your mind to something mm. and you practice, you get somewhere. Mm. I've got a lot of cases Uh, in my career, where I thought, yeah, is it good? I took a, I took something that's bigger than what I can do. Maybe okay. I doubted myself sometimes, and I realized it's not just me; it's the client. Because if she puts her mind through something, and she shows up three times a week, okay. and she does her homework at home, uh-huh. and I do my due diligence to make sure she's in the right path, we'll get somewhere. Ah, uh, okay, definitely. Okay, okay. okay, well, that's very interesting. Let's let's go back uh, <laughs> again. I went really deep. Uh, so, how, why did you start this? Like, why are you interested in all of this information that you just told me? Why do you want to learn it? Why do you want to teach people about it? Because Shif and I loved sports mm. in Zaman, and getting into Pilates was because I really didn't want to turn anybody down. Pilates is one of those methods that works for everybody. Prenatal, postnatal, some athletic conditioning, somebody who've never worked out before, um, um, for kids, for teenagers, the method works. And But when you say that, sorry to interrupt, but sorry. when you say that, I, I, I tried Pilates once for 10 minutes, like I was following a YouTube video. Yeah. It was very hard. It was not accessible for like somebody who's, I mean, I was athletic enough to be able to complete 10 minutes, but it was hard. Like I, I was like done after 10 minutes. Yeah. So when you say it's accessible to everyone, is there like different levels? Well, how does it? Come on. There are different levels and different techniques. So Pilates is a method and then okay. you have brands under it. So these brands, every brand has a different technique, uh-huh. a different methodology, different equipment. And as an instructor, the more certifications you have, the bigger the playbook. Mm. And once you have a big playbook, you can... pick and choose where to start with the client. And that's what we do in our studio. Mm. We don't use one method. 
we actually integrate many methods together and use them to benefit the clients. Okay, so I guess if I were to re, I mean, I want to ask you again, why do you do it? But what do you think people misunderstand about it? I mean, yeah, it's stigmatized. It's Okay. And you won't actually lose weight because I always get that comment from people. I want something and he's stronger and I want to sweat more. I know they do, but there's, it's not necessary that you don't, that you sweat for you to see your results. Mm. You need to be, have this crazy heart palpitation for you to see the results. Some movements, um, don't need that big of effort from you. Okay. But the result is way bigger than you think. And immobilizing your joints and stabilizing your joints uh-huh. come a long way. Let's say you told me you play tennis, yes. right? For somebody who plays tennis, your your range of motion uh-huh. and the way you actually hit the racket, these muscles, if you don't work them out and don't mobilize them, they'll affect your journey later on. So somebody like you should actually do athletic conditioning where we work on your swing and we work on how you hold the racket and the position of your wrist and your elbow and mm. how... The whole body integrates together in one smooth movement. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So also before we started, you mentioned that uh, I should do Pilates as a tennis player or any kind of sports. Ashan, I avoid injury. Now, what does Pilates do my, to my body that actually makes it less likely to get injured? Pilates puts you in the most shock absorbent position. What does that mean? Yeah. For example, let's say again, you're playing tennis yeah. and you get an injury. Mm. Most injury you're going to get is from your elbow, mm. your wrist, or maybe a sudden move, so you're going to twist your ankle. So. Yeah. If I don't strengthen and balance all your muscles around your ankles, your plantar flexors, your dorsiflexors, if I don't do that, then any injury that could happen can be a big injury all of a sudden. Mm. It's not going to be an ankle twist. You're uh. actually going to be injured. Okay, okay. But if your muscles are balanced and you know exactly where to find your core and mm. how to move, mm. you'll be in a most shock absorbent position where you're ready for something to go wrong and you're actually in a good uh, position to take it and take the minimal injury from it. Okay, so you're basically optimizing my movement and therefore if it's fully optimized, not only can I avoid injuries, but I can actually do stuff that I thought I couldn't do because now I have more range of motion and I'm more, because I know it's surfing in the middle of tennis, it's like I the ball is like moving way too fast and it's like to the right I can get it. This, my mind goes like, no, this is just a, you know, this is not a professional game. It's not worth the injury. Let, fine, let him get the point. And you see it a lot with paddle people. Some people, you know, don't want to do the jump because they're afraid that gonna land and then something. Good. So I guess you're, what you're saying is you're optimizing my body to be able to do whatever a human can do. And, and, and this is, this is where the neurological technique comes in. Mm. Your brain doesn't know how far your body can go because you did not train your brain and your muscle to coordinate together. So if I work out and my brain actually knows where I am in space, like if let's say if I'm sideways, my brain should know that I am sideways mm. and my muscles move accordingly to the position I'm in. Mm. In tennis, sometimes you're in a diagonal front or you, as you said, you have to go away and reach. Mm. So these practices and these techniques gives you that courage to actually go for it, mm. knowing that you can actually do it. Mm. And you can do it in a way with no injury. Okay. Then, isn't it better to actually start teaching kids Pilates so that they would be able to, I mean, I don't know if this is true, but I feel that the adults are better to shape. So let them, since they're five, six-year-old, know exactly what's the max range of mode. Because now I don't, And there is John Bnefsi, maybe a Madrili, and I guess he can think it's true. Because he won't be able to do anything. So, what do you think we should actually? Well, look now, kids nowadays at this age, yeah, يعني, they don't move a lot. They have iPads and we have iPhones, mm. and I'm guilty. I have a I have a daughter. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> But yeah. But yeah. when when we're spending time together, I find myself handing her, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. the iPad. So they don't actually move a lot, and mm. they don't move a lot. They don't use their muscles. And you don't use their muscles, you won't have that strong base for you to well, become a teenager and just join tennis or join basketball or just mm. go to volleyball. Kids right now are more into technology. Mm. And that's why when when you're into that and you're in a shape that's four hours a day, you're in that same shape and just flexing forward, you are going to have unbalanced muscles. Mm. It's, it's 100%. You know? Okay. So, 
I am with you. We should teach kids that, but maybe we should teach kids to move more mm. and actually enjoy the sports they can do in their age. Like I have a minimum age to teach. I don't teach less than 18 years old. Okay. You know, because less than that, they're still growing mm. and the muscles are still expanding and they're still exploring their body. And if there's an advice, then they should move. They should exercise. They should swim. And yeah. This is what kids should do. And once you've reached... 18 or 19 mm. and you want to optimize these muscles you want to actually move correctly you want to sit correctly you want to uh, sit in the office pain-free mm. uh, you want to sleep better this is where you should start and specify and be like i'm going to do pilates and integrate it into my life whether it's twice a week or three times a week because it does make a difference okay it does okay now then i'm going for average person that you see or let's say an average person that you know works out between now and then what muscles do you think that we have that are almost not used ever core we don't use our core I as, think as people use their core especially when they walk like when you walk do you feel your body do i feel my yeah. body do you feel your body going to the right and then shifting to the left i mean i, I guess if i think if about it but i'm not no usually i'm just like walking i don't exactly. know exactly when we're in a hurry You just feel your toes tapping on the yeah, ground yeah, yeah, yeah. and you don't feel your body moving because you're not aware and uh -huh. you're not connected. So if I would say the least muscles that are used are your mobilizers because some muscles stabilize you, like how I'm sitting right now. Okay. Yeah. And some muscles mobilize you. They allow you to move and lift your arm and move your hip. So these muscles that are least used uh -huh. because you don't move and you're not very connected with your muscles. So these are... the most highly to be affected. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so therefore, like, when I'm not going to walk, you can see if You can tell, like, which ones, uh, which person is using more muscle, which one's yeah. not. By experience, actually, that's what I do. Uh -huh. Now that I sit, if I'm waiting so in, a, in a clinic or yeah. at the supermarket, the first thing I do, I'm like, tight back, stiff neck, and a bad knee. Uh -huh. You know, I, I notice it because it's, it's your job when you do it on a daily yeah, yeah, basis. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just do it <laughs> naturally. Do you ever see anybody like in public that actually walks the way they're supposed to? Actually, yeah. I, I worked for a while in Thailand. and Oh, in Thailand. Was, I meant yeah. in Kuwait. <laughs> <laughs> in Kuwait, listen. I'm sure there is. I'm okay. sure. Because by the way, Kuwaitians, mashallah, are very into fitness. Mm. And they love taking care of themselves. And they're very educated and well-rounded. And once they walk into the studio, she knows what she wants. And she's read about it. Mm. And that's amazing because it keeps me as an instructor on the lookout for new methods and new techniques. And how to make that client always impressed. And always up to new things. You know, I, me as Shahad, I, I don't like routine. I like to always change and, you know, improvise. Especially with the Pilates nowadays, 2022. It's modernized in a way that you can do it on a machine, on a mat, while you're standing, on a wall. Like, it, it's becoming very easy and, and it's becoming more exciting to join. And I'm afraid okay. that you really... What's the difference between Pilates really and, like, intense yoga? Because to me, from outside, they look the same. They all do, like, diff different postures and whatnot. And... I don't know the difference because um, what I remember from that 10 minutes that I did, and it was a lot like get into this position and then hold it for like 10 seconds or whatever. Uh, so what's the difference between like fast yoga where they move through positions and Pilates? Look, they're actually very different because Pilates before was used to call it Contrology, by the way. That was the original Contrology, name. Contrology, okay. Um, and in Pilates, we use a lot of our stabilizers and let's say in a technique of Marifu. School of Marifu is one of the best schools of Pilates in the world. It's from Canada. And this is where I got my first certification. And from there, everything we learned was how to stay stable and how to coordinate the joints together to get that optimal position. How to contract that muscle. Mm. Let's say if you want to work on your abs, so you have to be in a C-curved position where your spine is curved in a way so all your core muscles are integrated. Okay. Example. In yoga, the breathing is different. The flow is different mm. and you're constantly, constantly shifting the load of weight from mm. your legs to your arms and you're moving back and forth. So in yoga, I'll say you're getting more of mobilizing and stretching and in Pilates, you're getting more of stabilizing and connecting. So if I'm doing Pilates, I'm going to be able to control my muscles easier. Mm. The, the breathing technique, the position you're in is actually way more optimal for you to contract that muscle in any other technique. I love yoga, by the way. 
And I do integrate it in my workout, especially with the new machines we've got, the Garuda method. Mm. It's based in London. And the teacher is a yoga instructor and a Pilates instructor. Okay. So the methods together were integrated with strength training because we use reformers in Pilates. So imagine yoga techniques with weights. Mm. So mm, Yoga technique with, okay, yeah. that's really, that sounds really hard to be on. <laughs> it's actually very beautiful. Uh, I, I mean, you if you can it do it, yeah, I, yeah, I bet. Okay, so now... How, uh, let's talk. Let's okay. Away from all of the science-based uh, questions, uh, do you think Pilates are hebe? Is yoga hebe? I hope not. <laughs> I mean, that's that seems like everything in Kuwait just coming. When and I go. first started 2017, uh, it was very new. It was fairly mm-hmm. new, and because, mashallah, here in Kuwait, you guys have a lot of studios, um, a lot of gyms. Every day, there's someone new getting certified. People don't know where to go because. Everybody's selling something amazing, by the way. I'm a firm believer that if you just move, that's a good exercise. Just okay. move. Okay. Know? But now, 2022, Pilates has become something very important in every woman's, uh, let's say, weekly routine of exercise. Why do you say woman? Why is it not men? Well, I... From what you explained, it seems like men actually might need it even they more. They should, because it's, it's for both genders, honestly. Yeah. But, you know, the more it was advertised and how it was perceived in the media with mm-hmm. all these women doing it so maybe a lot of people think it's just for women same but thing with yoga i mean yeah but a lot of men do yoga no yeah but like yeah. it took a while for men to normalize in the, i mean i honestly and like three years ago i wouldn't go to do any i'd be like i just came from yoga class now it feels a bit more comfortable to say that yeah it's true mm. because everything is being modern mm. and now especially after covid everybody now has it as a priority their health, their physical health, their mental health. Mm. And I think yoga and Pilates, it's it's a more of a brain-body connection. Yeah, 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 definitely. So even when you finish the class, you feel better. And a lot of people walk in and they had this worst day and they walk out with the biggest smile, you know, and, and you realize it is it is a brain and body journey. Yeah. You know? It does feel nicer when I do yoga. I, mean, I guess, this, I mean, what happens when you stretch? Let's say I'm very stiff and then you, I stretch the muscle. What exactly happens to my brain? And that, because it's all, it's all it feels like, you know, it's, it, it's the same feeling when I finish yoga, it's the same feeling as I just had massage. I associate them all together. So there are four ways to contract a muscle. Okay. And one of them. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, so I thought people, one. <laughs> so you have people who actually do weightlifting. Okay. And that's a concentric stretch because you're actually shortening the muscle, uh-huh. like a bicep curl and you get those nice, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. shape. And then you have the eccentric one. Where you go and stretch the muscle, and that's what we do in Pilates and yoga. Okay. And there's an isometric stretch where you actually stay in that position and hold, and that's also affecting the muscle. So, in the eccentric stretch, which happens in yoga and mm. Pilates, you're releasing the muscle from the tension it has. So, the most muscle, let's say, that stretches and feels amazing is your hamstring. Mm. Because you're walking every day and your anterior muscles, which is your forward muscles, are working the whole time. Mm reaching forward on a desk. So all the muscles you have in the front are relatively stronger than all the muscles you have from the back. So if I come and grab your leg and actually stretch you and stretch your hamstring, that's a a very new feeling for you because you don't actually feel it when you walk and you don't Mm. feel it when you sit down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you release the tension and you release the tightness that the body goes through. Yeah, okay, okay. Zain, I'm a natural person, if I do Pilates, do I need to, I mean, where to, where, where, how do you start? Do you just go to like, as a new, like, what, what, what is it? Cause I know yoga, there is like gentle yoga and they move very, like I can, I find it hard, but I can complete the class. Yeah. But Pilates, like what, what are the levels, I guess? Same thing. You have a beginner level, okay. you have an intermediate level, mm. and then you have the advanced level that you see on Instagram, people hanging upside down and. You know, doing walk around the world and scissors in the air. This is the advanced level. Mm. And it's funny you, you talk about that because a lot of people like to see this on Instagram, but then they feel very intimidated to join a class because they're like, oh my God, I won't be able to do that. Yeah, I, I feel this way, yeah. But in reality, it's actually baby steps. I didn't know how to do these moves before I took my certification. It took me a while to actually, you know, get the move right and do it right. And that was the motivating point. If I can do it, you can do it. And everybody can mm. do it. Okay. Do I need... 
على الاجهزه لازم جهاز حق بلايتد ولا يو كان دو ات وذات بال يو كان دو ات اون ذا ماتس يو كان دو ات اون ذا ماتس صح؟ اوكي 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 يو كان دو ات اون ذا ماشين بس ذا ماشين از بيوتيفول اوكي سو ذا ماشين از وات لايك ذا ماشين از فور انترميديت اند هاردر ستف ولا از ات اول ليفلز اول يو كان دو بيجنر اون ذا ماشين يا ديفينتلي اه اوكي وي دو بريجنت ويمن كلاسز اون ذا ماشين يا 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 اوكي ناو يو هاف ذا فروم ماي انديرستاندينج يو هاف ذا بيست ماشينز ان كويت اي دو اوكي واي واي Uh, how, what makes them very like what's the difference i don't know anything about that um the difference about these machines once for all they're a piece of art because mm. they have four machines in one okay so you get the stability chair which mm. is known the best for ankles and knees and hips for mm. your lower quadrant stability and then you have the reformer which is also a, a very nice exercise apparatus because you're actually laying down and doing all your trainings in a horizontal view So let's say if you have a client who has a bad knee, like okay. you, for example, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it won't be advisable for me to start giving you squats standing yeah. with all the weight you have. And I know for a fact, due to the posture, you won't be able to do it right. Mm. So doing it laying down, I can minimize, you know, the impact, the impact and the other joints that can be hurt in the process, oh, okay. get you in that perfect position. And then we take off from there. Mm. Yeah. And then you have the Cadillac, which is all about upper body strength and... lifting your body carrying your own weight mm. and the last part of the machine which is our jewel honestly it's called the sling it's something we wrap around your body while you do your yoga moves okay so anything hard for you let's say you know the vinyasa yoga it's actually hard mm. to do it right and get that the joints in the right place but with the sling it's a very nice uh, help and lift mm. for you to do it mm. okay now as far as being like an instructor or getting all the certifications Why do you think there is a lot of I mean you wanted you said you wanted to like I guess inspire females to get this kind of certifications but why do you think a lot of we have a lot of trainers that do like strength and conditioning but not a lot that can do yoga I mean just numbers wise what what's like Because the certifications for yoga and pilates takes a while Okay 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 a very long while Okay and and do you think you know if there is enough trainers in Kuwait then we'll see the shift from like Because now I talk about any money my dad but there is a lot of gyms where like there is you know it's for crossfit lifting stuff like yeah. that but do you think we can shift that to like just pilates and yoga because I I lived in cities in the world where I mean I lived in LA and if you go like around Santa Monica area stuff like that you barely see a gym it's all yoga studios it's all yoga studios so do you think this is something we could do it here I hope so because well, do you think it's just too too Um, too hard you know, to... I think it's a personal preference yeah. how you exercise. But I think what we need, we need more instructors that are actually aware mm. of these techniques and the knowledge and the know-how to get your client to enjoy their workout without injury. Mm. Because that's the bottom line. Bottom line, I want you to exercise, lose the weight, get your posture right, and don't hurt yourself in the process. Mm. You know? Mm. Um I made it a thing when we did our studio and كلنا عرب because honestly يعني احنا البنات العرب يعني our potential is just endless mm. you know and we're motivated and a lot of these methods are only in English and it shouldn't be a language barrier يعني it is though حتى حتى ترى بالكروسفيت حتى بال it's always like fitness in general it's all حتى تنس is like people say fault ما حد يقول كرة برا uh, I think it's just I mean, how do you shift the culture around sports in Kuwait? Or, I guess, in, in the Middle East, not even Kuwait. Well, I have clients that are like our age. Yeah. And I have clients, for example, And mm. I have clients, Azgar. And sometimes I find myself using Arabic terminologies because it's easier to deliver that piece of information. Yeah. Especially the interact with one hour. You know, I'm queuing you with my medical terms, well, with my Pilates term. Flex your spine and extend your knees. You realize what I'm trying to say. I just lost three minutes in my class. I know. So there's imagery cues where I can actually, with our language, use it in a way for you to just flow and move smoothly without thinking about it because it's something very familiar. Yeah, and that's I just true. said it's very easy. And that's why we're trying to motivate uh, Arab. Mm. But not Arab to get certified in Pilates and in yoga. And that's what we do because we're actually part of a hosting um, hub for workshops around the world. We get people's Mumbara, mm. Ijahina, and give that technique. And I'm somebody who actually can do the translation. Yeah. Make it a smooth. Hello, Mr. Gulina. I think it's very important. I'm going to yoga classes. 
sometimes they say lift your madri shunu it's like ana like my english is okay i went to a public school so i i don't it's not my first language so sometimes i do get like confused wait what did she say where which one was that so i think there is an ana had that تكلم عن شخص يتكلم انجليزي في اشخاص ما يتكلموا انجليزي يعني اذا انت ما تتكلم انجليزي كلش بالكويت اعتقد you can't even do yoga in kuwait no you would you're going to follow it بس هل انت مره فاهم لا ما تدري لا and it's going to be un Yeah, the experience is different, very different. Well, that's why, because ma fi brain muscle connection. Like, I know I've said it a lot in this interview, mm. but you'd be surprised what your brain is capable of. Because what you think, mm. you actually feel. Let's say, in the intazalan, or you're going through a bad day, it's going to show in your body. Mm. What is this connection? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. sometimes when I have a lot of stress at work, I automatically feel back pain. I know for a fact I did not injure my back, but I can feel it. Mm. I can feel that pain. And once I start breathing and relaxing and thinking about it, I'm like, I'm just stressed. So th- there is this crazy connection between your brain and your body that we're not utilizing. So if I walk into a class where, first of all, I don't understand half of what's been said. Yeah. And second of all, I'm not really um, integrating the movement and I'm not living the full experience. Mm. And I'm going to be doing it in every single class I go. Mm. And that's a waste of money. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's very true. Uh, you know, for us, I always say this to my colleague, we're a luxury and we're not a necessity. So we're something that you need to pick to come and join. Mm. And once you put your health and your priority on the line, you'll find that this is the place you want to be. Mm. You want to relax. You want that hour to be for you and only you, you know? Yeah, that's very, yeah. I mean, I think from from the, like a business perspective, that's very good that you're realizing the need for people to make that connection, whether it's a language barrier or just, you know, for them to actually feel the connection between their brains and their bodies. And I think the fitness industry is so commercialized And the consumer, so what options do I have? I'm just going to go, even if the class is not the best. But if I attend a class in your studio, I'm going to be like, oh, it's almost like going to a restaurant that cooks the meat perfectly. You mm-hmm. can't go back to eat, you know, overcooked meat again. Oh, so it's oh, the same thing. I think the experience when you go to a fitness studio and then they make you get that connection going, I guess you will never be able to go to another studio, which then will force the other studio to lift the way they do things to to match the same experience you're getting which gen overall will lift the whole so i think it's very good you know even though from my perspective you might be the only one that's going this detailed and hard about delivering that experience for the for for, for whoever's coming to your studio i think you're going to be leading the market in the sense of everybody needs every pilates studio at least needs to be as educated as you are Allah and they need to <laughs> i need to then they, they need to deliver the experience Because the exp- it, it, that's a different. I, I think in Kuwait, for example, white men, they go to the Petrohali class. Who is the instructor? Same studio. If the instructor is not happy with it, the instructor is not happy with it. And why do people think? I mean, before the Corona, in 2017, there was a love for yoga. Why do people say that it became commercial? They just brought anybody from anywhere in the world. Just, just, just do the class because it's, it's, a, it's a money thing. <coughs> So it's nice to see, you know, oh, it's always nice to go to a chef that actually cares about the food, <laughs> not just how much you're paying when you leave, you know what I mean? Honestly, yeah. Yani, um, we wanted to focus on the experience. Yani, creating balance was actually creating like semi of a social club mm. where until you go in, everybody knows your name. Uh, you know exactly oh, wow. where to go. Um, the place is very serene, very quiet. Mm. Um, you're there. just to feel disconnection. Because Ilyam and Abdul Wahab, you're with me in a podcast, and I'm sure you have a job on the side, mm. and you're a son, mm. and you're a brother, and inshallah, yeah. <laughs> um, you have many roles in life. And for you to balance all these, you need to be very deeply connected within yourself. True. And very happy, and, and releasing that best version of yourself. Mm. And that's what I wanted to do. Mm. Women... are the soul of the society. We are mothers, mm-hmm. we're daughters, we're sisters, we're wives, we're business owners, we're employees. And we need a place to feel important, mm-hmm. to feel special, um, to feel relaxed and to feel like I can, I can do, I can accomplish a lot. Um, I can actually get somewhere. This is not just where I'm going to be today and tomorrow and after tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Because today a client can uses one machine 
two months in, she's actually doing flips on the Cadillac. Yeah, and she's yeah, like, yeah. Oh my God, when I first came in, I never thought I'm going to do that. So it's a place to grow mm. and it's a place to get to know yourself. And hopefully the result I see actually, you know, it's like a pebble effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then yeah. they're amazing moms and they're doing good at their job. And يطلعوا من عندي عندها وسع بال to do everything else. I know, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, yeah, I think, I think I tried meditation meditation like i don't know two years ago for the first time and then i didn't get it but now that i do it a lot that is very hard to get in quick to be honest yeah it's Cause very life it pays city why Shari, Allah, there's yeah. a lot to do there's a lot to accomplish but good and i know when i came and lived here i was so inspired and i was like mashallah i need these women and those men every day there's a new goal and every day there is like you know the sky is the limit and there's mm. something higher to achieve so this fast-paced life needs a very calming and controlled hour for your brain, for your body, mm. for you to be able to continue and give it your all best, you know, and push okay. that. Uh, so you're confirming that we're uh, growing so fast that we need to chill a bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good too. Yes, I got used to it. And, and I come on, um. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I completely understand. Yeah. And I think if you look at like developed cities, there is a reason why there is a lot of yoga studios in New York. Mm-hmm. It's because it's, it's true. You need recovery when you when you go that fast uh okay let me just i want to i'm interested to hear your opinion about like what happened what did we learn from covid not as far as like you know vaccines and whatnot but from a mental health perspective i mean i get it it's a very bad situation that happened to all of us but it's time to get the benefit out of it by by actually studying the lesson that we we got definitely and, and what what did you from your perspective what did you What did you notice from a mental health? Honestly, when COVID happened at the beginning, of course, it was a shock. Mm. But then slowly, slowly, it made that we're in a fast track situation in a big microscope. Like, oh, my God, life was moving so fast. And now that I'm just in one place focused on myself, I mm. can't get out. Mm. So now it's time for me. And that's my me time. And that's how I got inspired with balance. Because I realized it's true. Like when, when, when COVID hit... I managed to stay home. I didn't stay home <laughs> this, these long days and hours mm. and all the years before. Right. And I didn't have this free time in my hand. Mm. What am I going to do with this free right, time? Right, right, you right. Know? And now that life is back <coughs> mm. and we're actually back on track, how do you balance what you got used to in COVID of mm. things being very calm and slowly to going back to this fast track life again? And I think this is where we come because... I have to admit, COVID had a mental effect more than the virus itself. That's very true, actually. Nobody knew what was going to happen, mm. business-wise, family-wise. I had a baby, and, and being pregnant during COVID was, and it wasn't the best experience. Right, right. But it made me realize that we all need to relax, and mm. we all need to be aware and connect with our bodies more, and and let go of whatever COVID effects mentally we had on ourselves that we don't feel. You know, because mm. some nature, some yani, qualities and stuff that we got from COVID is very hard to let go. Mm. And I have a sanitizer with me now wherever I go. And it's actually mentally because wherever I go, I'm thinking, I you know, know I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. constantly stressed and I have a baby and I'm thinking about it. And I have a studio where I have to be like hygiene yani, million for, me mm. for everybody else. You know, is it going to happen again? So this stress keeps you in that corner and that's very tight corner for you to move and set your body free mm. do you think okay COVID. how many of them do you think they come because of they need a mental break versus everybody them? i'm the first one so it's not just about <laughs> moving your body or stretching it's actually you want your the like, whole the whole experience mm-hmm. like a hundred percent you yeah you know because usually if, if you go to a class You'll give your trainer your body and be like, okay, I'll move the way you want. Yeah. But I'm going to think about what I want to think about. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 But yeah. That's not where you want to be. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, you want to be engaged in that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that present moment. Hmm, that's very interesting. Now, what, I guess, what what do you think motivates you every day to go? Because, I, I mean, the business you're in, while it's fun, at the beginning it's not easy. It's it's a lot of, like, you do everything So what did you think is, the, what, what what moves you every day to actually keep going there? You know, I'm very lucky to be a people's person. Mm. I love communicating with people mm. and just watching people grow and evolve and become the best version of their self, man, it's priceless. Really? It's, How does it feel to see somebody thinking that they can't do something and then 
you show them. It's amazing. It's amazing because you, you see it in front of your eyes. Like I have clients with me for six years mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. and they're, they're different people. The way they walk, the way mm-hmm. they move, the mm-hmm. way they exercise, mm-hmm. energy wise as well. Mm-hmm. Um, even in their relationships, even at home. Um, usually some of my clients, I say they have a short temper mm-hmm. and then I notice after a while, mm-hmm. had a temper. Because he actually or she has a place to release that energy, to let go of that stress. There is a window, you know, and that window, the payment is way bigger than what you're doing. You know, you're you're putting uh, three hours weekly to do Pilates, but the result is just something, it's mind-blowing. Yeah, yeah. okay. Now, I had a trainer uh, in the last episode here. His name is Nader. And he was telling me some days he wakes up and he doesn't feel like leading a class. But he does it anyways. So how how do you approach this days where like you have a class, you have a client that expects you to perform, and then but you are not in the mood? It happens, طبعا. And I'm an Adam. It yeah, does yeah. happen. But I'm lucky enough to actually be surrounded by amazing clients mm. that make you want to show up to class and oh, okay, make okay. you want to be there early and yeah, give yeah, you yeah. that drive. Because mm. if you see somebody committed to you. You feel by default, about, yeah, yeah, you want, yeah, yeah. You want to give that commitment back. Uh-huh. Yeah, I guess that. I guess and and I guess it's a nice if if your clients are more motivated to come than you are, it lifts you up to. It it's like that energy transformation thingy. Uh, that that okay. That's very interesting. I mean to to see somebody who's doing something so different and committing hundred percent to it because it's easy to be like the. 10th studio in Kuwait, you know, yeah. that the, the thing is there, but you're trying to establish the culture. Uh, and you wanted to do it as a social club, you said, right? Yeah, because honestly, you guys are the best. You deserve the best method. Yeah, you I guys. think you're one of us yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am definitely yeah, yeah. proud about it. Um, this, this whole social club idea was just a very mini or small, as you said, baby step mm. of that culture we're trying to set mm. of Come and enjoy your time. Mm. You're not torturing your body when you're exercising. Mm. You're actually delay. <laughs> you're yeah. actually giving your You're giving your body what it deserves, and it deserves the best instructors, the best machines, and mm. the best methods and the newest methods in the indus- industry. Or as they say, it's the intelligent way to exercise. That is very. Yeah. That sounds like it. To be honest, it sounds very like it. Yeah. Uh, So before we end, but let me ask you this question. I started asking all of my guests this question. If you were to 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 choose one person, dead or alive, from all over the world to sit with and have a conversation, who would it be? It's not an easy question. And why? To sit with and have a conversation with? Yeah. Like anyone in the world. Any figure. Any figure. Well, I might take it a little bit personal. I okay. wish that my dad would be around. Mm. Yeah, I know when I started with Sardia, it was like a new thing. It's like, what? Personal trainer? How is it going to be? Yani, what is this industry? What Something year was new? that? That was 2008. Oh, wow. 2008, yes. And, he, and I studied finance, by the way. Oh, nice. I graduated nice. Yeah, yeah. in finance. And then I shifted my career because um, we had a family business, mm. one of the gyms in Saudi. And... Mm. So I joined the team, and when I joined the team and I did my first class, I was like, oh What's my God. meaning localization? Eh? localization. Yeah, localization. Okay, just <laughs> okay. Yeah, and uh, when I joined the first class and I led one, I fell in love with it. I was like, oh my God, this is my calling. Mm. I am born to do this. Mm. And back then, I had the opportunities with Yom, And where I am today and what I do today and the effect I have on people's lives, mm. I wish in mm. Nurwalid to share it. And, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that's, yeah, I think, uh, I, yeah, I mean, you're leading the movement. Like, I have to, <laughs> like, I've never met somebody who's, I've never met anybody who started an industry, to be honest. I, I'm, I'm, I always meet businesses that in an established industry. Uh, and I say this also from, like, a, like, I own a marketing agency and Most of the people we know, when they come to us, and there is rules to each industry. Like, how do you choose colors? How do you do, I don't know, content, whatever. But if, if an industry doesn't exist within a culture, it becomes, I mean, the good thing about it is you can establish the standard. You can choose how people will perceive it. Uh, but then the hard part is it's all on you. You, you are the leading, you know what I mean? 
And from what you've been saying, like it seems like it seems like this industry is gonna boom if the if you can get the mind body connection because I think it's overlooked. Yeah. As a product. Yeah, of course. As a service, nobody oh. does it. Yeah, of course. Nobody does it. You see, honestly, when you say leading. I have to give credit to people as well here. Like you have Jade Pilates, Nur Al-Amr. Mm. You have Rana Al-Umani, one of the best movement instructors here in Kuwait. Everybody has their basma and mm. everybody has their effect on nas. And when we wanted to start, because there is high competition and mm. because there are many, mashallah, good instructors for Balad and people who are actually worth your time and worth your while, we wanted to go a step higher mm. and make it something more, as you said, the product of a mind-body mm. experience. And together, integrated with everybody, mm. we, start, we, we lift the Pilates industry from something that's a habba mm. to something that's a lifestyle. Mm. And that's actually where we wanted to head and where we wanted to lead. And I think people are actually going for it. Because now a lot of my clients, for example, did a lot of online Pilates in, in COVID because okay. my can be studios yeah. and it worked and they lost the weight and they exa- because they were stuck at home. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> so yeah. they had to stick to their method. Mumathan and three times Pilates and one time spinning and, and two times CrossFit, you know, they so actually if, stuck yeah. to a method. If I do worked. Pilates, do I need to try anything else? Shoof, and usually I tell my clients, no, give me like a first two, three months of your exercise, just purely Pilates, for me to balance you out mm. and get you in that shock absorbent position where you need to be, and then feel free to go and exercise whatever you want. So different types of exercise, therefore, might help, might contribute to you not being balanced. Taman, taman. Because let's say, again, you play a lot of tennis, and I'm sure you hit the racket with your right hand. Yeah. So once you do that, your left hand is going to be significantly weaker. And the way you rotate your whole body to swing the ball, you don't rotate the same other direction. Other one, yeah. So that's what we try to balance out. So everything needs to be balanced. But once you're there, it's very easy for you to engage in any other sport because you know your body. Mm. You know where you're standing and what you're doing and how you're sitting, you know? Like, for example, me and you were sitting and we're leaning to one side. Yeah, I am leaning to my feel right. It? Yeah. yeah, we no. don't feel it. But after two, three minutes, you're like, that's yeah you know and you get to lean again to the same direction because your brain is used to you being in that position so is it, gets, does yeah. that then mean and i'm right-handed can you make my left as strong as my right as strong okay you use this with kamsana i know i know yeah oh you write with it kamsana. but let's say i bring you a five-year-old with like a right hand dominance can you make them use both Hopefully. i mean you because you see some players, like yeah. soccer players, football, some of them can hit both legs. Some can forget about it. It's just one leg. Yeah, because I had the training, Minas Sadar. Yeah. No. You know? And but that's not a mental thing. I thought, like, we're born. That's why we, I write with my right, not my left. It's a mental thing. It's not... It is a mental thing, but you can train your body. That's, subhanAllah, and the amazing thing about an insan. Uh-huh. And we still didn't discover the possibilities of what humans can actually do and can okay. achieve, you know? But it's all... In the training, if I train you to work a certain way or stand a certain way or exercise a certain way mm. and then change it all of a sudden and train do something else, you will actually be amazing at both. If you got the right training and the right basic training you needed. And as you said, mm. when they're young, because when you're young, you don't have something you're used to. Yeah, I, need, I always say this to my clients. I need to un you to Pilates you again. Because sometimes in Tatiji, mm. you have a brain perspective. In that perspective, Ma'ayan and yoga, for example, since you're familiar with mm. it. You the movement. You enter the class with a set of thoughts. Mm. And once you do that, you limit your, your motion. Wallah, I'm not a downward dog. Immediately, once you do a downward dog, you're going to be stiff. Because you already sent that message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You already yeah, yeah, created yeah. that thought. Mm. So the more you have a clear brain, that's why kids, are easier to learn because my them shade to compare to or to hold the right, 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 right. Yeah. They grasp that information a hundred percent, you know, and, and that's the magic, mm. I guess. Okay, that's very interesting. Okay, before we are up here, so let me plug you in. So you have a balanced studio for Pilates. Yeah. Can you tell me like what do you offer in that studio as far as like classes no, and whatnot? Shana, we offer amazing stuff. So we offer Pilates classes. Mm. We offer yoga classes. We offer bar classes which mm. is amazing mm. and taban the jewel of our studio is our rehab program mm. we do prenatal postnatal 
and we do MS, Parkinson's and, st- and strokes recovery and any neurological condition in general. We don't do an educational part. Yeah. We don't do speech therapy and these right, things. Right, right. But we coordinate the brain and muscle together. Mm. For kids, for teenagers, for adults. Um, okay. Need. So that, that's amazing. That's amazing business. Uh, okay, so on Instagram, it's Balanced Studio, right? Yeah, Balanced Studio. Course. All right. Well, that's our show. What's up? Oh, 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 oh,